Good evening, ladies and jet setters. Uh, so tonight we have got for you a delicious 1970s Gerson Les Paul-like guitar. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so I thought I'd let you have a little bench look at this. This is the this is the Gerson, which is an Italian uh, manufacturer, Italian guitar manufacturer, and what they do is they copy their Gibsons and Fenders and Rickenbackers, and this, and I wanted to show you this particularly. The grain on the fingerboard, I mean, we've got a zero fret, and look at that, look at that, you won't get the chance to see the nut like this again, but the nut looks like I don't know. It looks like Mother of Pearl or something like that. It's quite nice. Zero fret, of course. And uh, I've sorted the frets out. But the, the look at the grain on the fingerboard. That looks, for all the... I mean, you can see because there's a little bit of nibbling out of it here. As you can see, around the 21st fret, I think it is, 20th, 21st fret, 19, 20, whatever. So you can see that whatever's on the fretboard, it's a veneer. But that looks, for all the world, like teak on rosewood. Nice neck binding. Of course, this dates back to about 73. So you can probably expect to see a few defects in it, it's had, uh, you can see here where there's evidence that somebody's taken the control knobs off by just bunging a screwdriver in, which is just horrible. I'd like to go back in time and find them. These uh, humbuckers oh. have got uh, a screw on each side for the height and They've got some lovely features, these guitars, and they have a screw on the left which does the tilt angle of them so that you can it's nice. The bridge saddles have got you've got a stop tail here, and the bridge saddles, which are tunematic after a fashion, and I've checked the intonation, it's absolutely fine. They've got these, they've got individual slots in them so that you can decide where the string sits. I don't know why, but anyway, there they are. Um, you have a very, and I have, <coughs> I have spotted this before. Uh, we've got uh, volume and tone, um, which as you can see, are opposed uh, to each other. And these two do, one of the pickles, can't remember which, we'll have a look in a bit. Uh, but we've got a push-pull, on the tone on one pickup and a push pull on the volume on another. I mean, it, I mean, they both do the same thing. They just split the coils, so I don't suppose it really makes any difference. Uh, as we can see, it's a shame the there's no scratch plate. You could probably probably make one or have one made. Anyway, we'll have a, a noisy look at it.
noise it makes noise it makes noise and it really is an absolute crying shame it's lamentable because this is another one of my buddy John's uh, guitar collection we are coming to the end of those now so I'm gonna have to start uh, getting my thinking cap on about what's coming next so I've got uh, an Ibanez or Ibanez if you prefer uh, which is of course the uh, correct uh, pronunciation Ibanez uh, from uh, Salvador Ibanez, um, 18 something to about 1920, uh, which is of course where Gacky uh, nicked the name from because they used to import his guitars. That's another story for another day. So, on to this one Gerson, Gerson, Gerson. One Gerson. I think that uh, Chaz and Dave did uh, a song about these, not really sure. Uh, anyways, Let's have a look around the blighter and we'll tell you what we can. Now, the first thing that I will tell you is that the parts are not waxed. How do we know they're not waxed? That's how we know the parts are not waxed. So, not parts, I'm talking about a hat, as per usual. I should start that again, but anyway, you'll get it. The pickups are not waxed. If the pickups are not waxed, uh, in other words, uh, sealed, to prevent harmonics bleeding out of them, then they will not make that horrible racket. Gibson do a new range of, I think it's, uh, 1960s, 1920s, 60 uh, year anniversary uh, models uh, which have intentionally unwaxed pickups and they will make that noise. That's what happens. So, uh, now, uh, obviously, as you can see, we've got two humbuckers and these are really, really clever. And hopefully, you'll see the um, segment that's on the bench that shows you what they do. Oh yeah, so the great crying shame about this is that I've whistled it up and got everything sorted out and it got the intonation right, new strings on and a few other odds and sods. And this will go back to my mate John where it will sit in a box for the next, for, it's been in a box I think since about 1973 which is some uh, years, 80, so that'll be 47 years, and if he lives long enough, then it'll sit in a box for another 47 years, 
which is a great shame because it is a bit of a player's guitar. It's a, this is terrific. It on gig and it is very easy to play and it's very well put together and it's full of quality bits. Let's turn noisy off and let's have... Now, uh, I think that there is something a little bit suspect with going on with the wiring uh, because although all three pickups work and they do work on each pole, so I've done the tap test. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, the obviously the tone for the neck pickup. Oh, sorry, that was dead. And the volume, which works very, very well. But when you get it in the centre position, if the bridge pickup volume is off, nothing. I don't know if they're supposed to do that. Maybe they are, I don't know. And the other unusual thing is this, is that let's have it on back on the neck, is that the, but the now don't forget, this guitar, they started these in 1960-ish, and Gerson copied uh, famous stuff. They copied SGs and Les Pauls. They also copied uh, Rickenbackers and some of the, and, 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 and Fenders too, I seem to think. Uh, and they were very good guitars, if this one's anything to go by. Made of quality stuff. What a shame, it's a bolt on neck. That's the only, for me, that's the only thing that really lets it down. Obviously, it's getting on a bit. There's a few, there's a few nibbles out bit here and there, but it's got nice binding. 21 frets, I think. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, yeah. And uh, it's also got, interestingly, the truss rod adjustment on this is at the base of the neck, not up at the head stock end. And that's very, very similar to well, many of those like uh, your music masters and what have you, absolutely nothing wrong with it being there, but then it being concealed like the Dan Electro is. And some old offenders. Anyways, uh, onward and upward. So we've got a stop tail here, as you can see, and we've got a tunematic style bridge, and it all works very, very nicely. Everything works. Now, Let's do the corner switch. Now on the neck pickup, the corner split is on the tone. And it does work. That's just uh, the way they're supposed to work. Let's listen to the, sounds, listen to the bridge uh, pickup or train, whichever you prefer. So there's the tone on and off, volume on and off, very nice. And here's the they're great, it's nice. And for 1973, I've got to tell you, these put your Antoria, your Shaftesbury, uh, Avon, there's just nicer stuff on them. However, these weren't as popular because they didn't quite look as less poorly as the Avons and Shaftesbury's and Columbus's. Uh, I, although I rather probably think they did, but they weren't, uh, they weren't quite as uh, popular. Probably because they, they did them all in black, they'd have probably sell. So, um, <coughs> Uh, the coil splits work on each.
what do I know about that sort of thing? <coughs> Zero. So that's us listen to it, and now we'll have a look round it. This is always my favourite bit. So obviously it is knocking on. Sadly, the scratch plate has gone, so it's left three holes. It wouldn't cost a million quid or take a long time to sort that out. You would be okay with that, but he doesn't want, John doesn't want anything uh, doing to it. He wants to keep its mojo. Uh, mojo is a guitarist term for knackered, uh, a bit like patina and player's guitar. All of these words mean it's had a hard life. Uh, so let's see. So it's got a bit of a pretend uh, Gibson emblem on there, hasn't it, with the uh, diamonds or the whatever you want to call them. And uh, I'm guessing, looking at it, you can probably tell here that the hardware at one time was uh, will have had a gold finish on it. Uh, let me get my mush out of there, and then you can see it better. So. Um, Yes, uh, it's a shame, and again, uh, budget tuners, really, budget tuners, uh, capped rather than sealed, probably 14 to 1, I suppose. And what is nice about it, have a look at the tuning key shanks, these here. All right, okay, have a look at that. And now have a look at the string slots on the bridge. Look at that. Collar and cuffs matching. Now lovely. Uh, so yes, the humbuckers uh, have got, the, I will guess that they are Gerson's own because I've seen them on other Gerson uh, products and they pack a far greater punch than the Avon Columbus Shaftesbury uh, items. And yeah, what a yeah, what a shame! It's a bolt-on neck. That's a, you know, maybe uh, they're bolt-on for shipping. I don't know because that would make life easier. The binding, the binding's lovely. You know, it's a little bit, a little bit moth-eaten here and there. But uh, all in all, all in all, a great guitar has stood the test of time. Is 47 or thereabouts, maybe 50 years old. And it's good, and it is really, really good to play. That weighs, I reckon, about it's about three kilograms, maybe a maybe a shade over, but it's about three kilograms. Uh, anyway, it's got a few set of irons on it, all nice and shiny and spanky. And John, when you get it back, don't just let it sit in its case. If you're not going to play it, sell it to some kid who'll appreciate it. Uh, I think that that is all from me tonight, and it's been lovely. Oh, I didn't do the old, um, oh, I could do that in a bit, couldn't I? Hello, uh, what's this? Well, I always do. Uh, I might do. Anyway, uh, what I can say is, adios amigos, thanks ever so much for watching. Ta-ra.